first memory is his new commercial. I mean, when it's, when, his, when everything just stops. I mean, that's when, the, like, when I first seen the commercial, I just was like, I just went back from like 10 years ago from watching him play when he was like a rookie or something like that. Within 15 seconds, I, I could just see everything just go real fast. <laughs> Do you remember the first time you saw Michael Jordan play? Even if you weren't old enough to see him play on live television, there was always a special feeling when he was on your screen. You knew this guy was doing something on the court that wasn't seen before. From the beginning of his career, Jordan had a way of drawing people to him. Fans and players were amazed at his skills on the court, his ability to score from anywhere, his defensive prowess, and his famous gravity-defying dunks. So many fans shared their first time watching Jordan, and I want to do a video of just 10 NBA legends sharing their first time facing Michael Jordan and what that felt like when they were on the same court as him. So we will start with number 10, Isaiah Thomas. Michael Jordan and Isaiah shared an intense and highly competitive rivalry, especially in the 80s and early 90s, when the Detroit Pistons and the Chicago Bulls faced off in several heated playoff series. Even though they do have some tension, they respect each other game. And you will see this here when Isaiah Thomas share a story of meeting Jordan for the first time. And I look at Jordan like it was like, when he walked in, it was like, uh -oh. damn. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, oh, like, 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 is he for real? <laughs> well, you, 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 okay, I remember when we first played against him, um, it was the Olympic, um, oh, yeah. the Olympic 84. team right, right. in 84. 84 in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And they was doing the, 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 uh, the pros coming to play against... Um, the Olympic you know, team. The Olympic yep. team. Mm -hmm. And I remember Coach Knight <laughs> saying, <Yeah. laughs> Coach Knight was coaching him, he said, this one a little different now. <laughs> <laughs> this one's one a little different now. And so, you know, in Phoenix, it was hot in the summer, and, you know, he, you, you watch guys dunking and everything, but he had a different kind of bounce, you know, jumping and dunking, and I was like, okay, all right, all right, that's kind of nice, that's kind of nice. And then the game started, and this dude was so fast and so quick. He was like, oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's a PG show. It's a PG thirteen show, Coach. <laughs> but but some, some curse words are necessary. <laughs> 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 Clyde Drexler is a legend who was often compared to Michael Jordan in his playing days due to his high flying dunks and smooth play style. Drexler has spoken about the significance of competing against Jordan, noting how such matchups push him to improve his game. You will hear his experience every time he faces Michael Jordan. Now, how did you did you know Jordan? You played against him. I did not know you him. Did. I played against him in the 82 semifinal. Okay. North Carolina versus Houston. That's when was he was he a he, he was, was a freshman. I he was, was a sophomore. freshman year, the year they won yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so I knew he was a pretty good player. And then, you know, if I had stayed in college, I would have been a senior. The eighty four Olympic team, Bobby Knight sent me a letter saying, I want you and Jordan to head my Olympic team in eighty four. Okay. But I ended up going to the NBA. And All so right. we knew Jordan was, was a great player. There was no doubt. And so Michael Thompson and I were, were saying, You gotta pick this guy regardless of positions or who you have, you need good players. Yeah, I know he's going to come at me, and guess what? He knows I'm coming yeah. at him. Yeah, I'm going to play my game. If you get in my way, I'm going to knock your nose off. Yeah, Same way with him. We're going to compete. Jason Kidd, one of the greatest point guards in NBA history, was known to impact the game in many ways. And in fact, he had 25 points, 15 rebounds, 11 assists, and 6 steals against Michael Jordan and the Bulls. Kidd looked up to Jordan as the epitome of greatness in basketball. Oh. That was the first day. Do you remember that game? Yeah. Was that in Dallas? That was in Dallas. Yes. Ninth game of that season. Yes. Was that the game where... Uh... He took it easy on me. He did. He only had 36 points, and they won by six in overtime, but you didn't take it easy on him. Do you remember what you did? Uh, I fouled out. 25, 15, 11, and six steals. Uh, none of those steals were against when I was guarding him. <laughs> uh... They must, we must have been playing on a lower basket for me to score that many points. I, was, I remember because I had went to dinner the night before with Michael, and, uh, and I was just hoping when I left dinner that, um, that I didn't upset him. Um, I think he picked up the check. 
which might have upset him since I was a rookie. Um, but it was just, a, you know, playing against the best, you know. Um, and I got lucky if those were my stats. Um, but, but we lost, so those, it, you know, it's about winning, and that's what he does best. Tracy McGrady is one of my favorite players of all time, and he has one of the best stories of when he first faced Michael Jordan. You will hear him say that special glow Jordan had when he faced him. How was it like playing against MJ your rookie year? Shaking in my boots. First time, <laughs> shaking it, shaking, shaking it. The first time I had the guard, I'm like, yo, this man. First of all, let me go back. 1997, MJ them in the playoffs. I think they they played against the Hawks, right? I'm at the game, playoff game, bro. I got an opportunity to go uh, in the back by the locker room after the game. So I'm standing back there. I'm 17 years old, kid. I, I've never been around NBA players like this or even, you know, I've never been around somebody like MJ. I'm standing back there, kid, and Pip Black comes Jesus. out. Pip comes out. All these players start coming out. Mike comes around that corner. Bruh, I ain't gonna lie to you. The man had a glow, <laughs> bro. I swear, Mike, Mike, dog, oh, that shit is real. <laughs> I believe it. That shit is real. Hey, hey, K, hey, KG said the same thing. You just feel his energy. Uh, He'll say hey, shit. Jealous. You feel yeah. that energy. I'm not, I'm not joking, bro. It's, Black it's Jesus, real. Man, I'm telling bro, you. Mike came out. I was like, damn, bro. I ain't know what to say, <laughs> man. I was like, that's MJ, dog. That's MJ. So fast forward. I'm on the court with him for my rookie year. It took me about a quarter to get over the fact that. This might, right? But man, once once it wore, you know, that, that mystique wears off if you're around somebody yeah. for a long time. It wears off. It's like, okay, shit, let's get it. I damn near had my best game as a rookie playing against it. I almost had a triple double mm. in front of 30,000. You know, we played in the Sky Dome. 30,000 yeah, 30, yeah. Mike had him coming in there, bro. And that was the year they had, what, 72 and 10? Yeah, we, was one of them, we was one of them 10. Yeah, in Toronto. <laughs> yeah, good game. Uh, yeah. You, you, you and Mike both had good games that game. Hey, Mike had about 35. <laughs> hey, he probably had about 12 on me. Easy. I'm like, man, this is Mike, bro. Paul Pierce, one of the most skilled forwards in NBA history and was known for being a clutch performer. He shared his experience facing Wizards Jordan and he got a sample of what Jordan could do when he wanted to win. Once the cigar comes out, it's like he's already lighting the victory cigar before the competition. I had a chance to play against Michael Jordan, but it was when he had the Wizards uniform on, so it wasn't quite prime Michael Jordan. It was 40-year-old Michael Jordan. I remember he still was a phenomenal athlete. He still had great footwork, and he actually gave me about 30 points. Jordan, it was like my third year in the league, and uh, he was still probably one of the top 10 athletes in the game at the time. Yeah, he trash talked a little bit. You know, I remember him hitting a fadeaway, telling me you can't get to that. Here. Away, he hit 29 for you know, he, re he really had a rivalry with Antoine Walker being that Antoine Walker was in Chicago and, you know, these guys played against each other in pickup games in the summer. And, you know, him and Antoine Walker really uh, went at each other quite a bit. Antoine, you know, he, he's one of the best trash talkers that ever played the game. But I think that game, he wished he had just not said anything. Allen Iverson, aka The Answer, always showed respect to Jordan and was even his idol growing up. Iverson shared a funny and wholesome story of meeting Jordan at his Hall of Fame speech. I mean, I was excited, you know, because I'm thinking, um, you know, we have a chance to play the world champions and, you know, the, the day will come where I step on the court with, in my eyes, the best basketball player that ever stepped on a basketball court. And uh, it was just an exciting moment for me. And it was something that I treasured for the rest of my life. And, um, you know, you want to be fast like Isaiah. And you want to shoot like Bird. You know, rebound like Barkley. Pass like Magic. Be dominant like Shaq. 
But man, I wanted to be like Mike. You know what I mean? Um, I remember the first time I played against him. And um, I, w I walked out on the court and I, I looked at him and for the first time in my life, a human being didn't look real to me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if y'all watch the Chappelle show, but he, he, he talk about a certain incident where he seen somebody seen Rick James. And like, I literally seen his aura. Like, like he, it looked like he was, it looked like he was glowing. Shaq's story about meeting Michael Jordan for the first time is quite surprising because coming from one of the most intimidating players in NBA history, he said he was terrified playing against him, especially when he scored 64 points on his Orlando Magic team. You're going to hear Shaq explain that terrifying experience of facing him. Over time. What? Just stack your limitations up. I was terrified out there. Were you really? Yeah. You just got a MJ? Yeah. You gave for him how 20? long? For how long? Right when you took the floor? No, or? the whole game. Because one, he's the greatest player. Two, I was worried about him dunking on me and I have to go back and, you know, oh, face yeah, the yeah. fellas. And then three, he was just so hot. I was like, man, this dude, like, the stuff that I saw when I was in college on TV, it's, it's like really real. I was terrified. <laughs> I mean, but, you know, when I got the ball and saw those bums they had playing me, you know, I was going to go to work. Bums. Uh, bums. Uh, they NBA Come on, brother. Bums. You hear what I said? NBA so, but anyway, like, just watching him out there, I was terrified. I uh, remember that Mike is killing us, but we're close. You know, when you see the light at the end of the tunnel, you go for it. Damn, I'm about to beat Michael Jordan. What was that locker room like when you pull off an OT win like that, come from behind on the road? Everybody was happy, especially Nick, because he was from Chicago. It was great. And again, it was a great confidence booster. Michael Jordan's going off. He ended up with 64 points. What is the team talking about? What do you remember about it? Before the game, I was terrified. But to relieve pressure of that, I ain't got to guard him, so I'm not worried. Second thing I said, I can't let him dunk on me. That's not going to happen. So it was a play when he comes baseline. Jordan turns and faces. Shot clock at seven, six, and a Whoa! That might really hit him. I had to touch him up. That's one I'm not getting dunked on, because I'll never live that down from family members, homeboys, barbershops. That'll be a poster forever, because Mike was the man at the time. But Mike also taught me something very valuable. So when I go to help him up, he said, don't ever help nobody up. Great foul. Don't do that. I don't need your help. But I'm coming back. Don't you worry. Mike is the guy that taught me how to go to the next level. Down the line, we beat him. And we used to come and go to the finals. We get swept by Kenny and them. The next year, they sweep us. Walking off the court, Mike grabs me and says, before you succeed, you must first learn to fail, and that helped me out when I made the move to LA and kept failing. Charles Barkley, one of the greatest power forwards in the game, shared a funny story about when he was a sophomore in college and saw a young Michael Jordan that completely blew his mind when he was on the court. It was unbelievable that he had accepted that he was the second best player in the country already and that Jordan was a level above him. First time I met Michael Jordan, I was like, I've never seen anything like that before. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was amazing. You know, I, I was at an Olympic trials and I probably should have made the team. Bobby Knight just didn't like me. He didn't like me because he's a dick. Um, but so, you know, we had, we invited like 120 players to try out for the Olympic team. And they went 100, 120, 180, 60, 40, uh, 20, 16, 12. So I made it to the final 20, and driving to the airport, it was me, Carl Malone, John Stockton, and Terry Porter. And I went back to my college, and John Thompson, rest in peace, one of the greatest men I've ever met in my life. Rest in peace, Big John. He called my coach, and he said, Sonny, I just want you to know that Charles was one, the second best player here. He probably should have made it to the Olympic team, but Bobby just didn't like him. He didn't have a reason, he just didn't like him. And my coach said, John, I really appreciate you taking the time to tell me that, blah, blah, blah. So he hangs up the phone and he says, Charles, I thought you were the best player in the country. Well, I said, I'm not. I said, Coach, let me tell you something. There's this black dude from North Carolina. I ain't never seen nothing like it. And at this time, we're like sophomores in college. Wow. I said, Coach, Coach, let me tell you something. 
I ain't never seen nothing like this dude in my life. He is a little taller than me. Uh, he's really lanky. He's really black. But he can outrun everybody. He can outjump everybody. And I ain't never seen anything like it in my life. He says, what's his name? I said, Michael Jordan. I said, we hit it off really good. For some reason, we liked each other. I think that we both small town guys. Uh, but I was killing these dudes. He was killing these dudes. But yeah, coach, I wasn't the best player there. That black cat from North Carolina is the best I've ever seen. And like I say, at this point, he's just a, a sophomore in college at that time. Number two, Steve Nash a point guard that every team dream of having. He was a two-time MVP and was in the 50-40-90 club four times, which is insane. He was one of the many players that idolized Jordan. Listen to this hilarious story of when he faced Michael Jordan in his rookie year. First month of my rookie season, we played the Bulls twice, home and away. First one time was at the United Center in Chicago, and I'm on the bus after the game, and Chucky Brown gets on the bus with Jordan's shoes, and I'm like, are those MJ's shoes? He's like, yeah. I'm like, how'd you get those? He's like, I asked him for them. And I was like, I was thinking to myself, you can do that. And so <laughs> uh, two weeks later, they, they come to Phoenix and we play. And there's, I posted a picture on Instagram, you know, the, the day of the first episode of the last dance and just saying, you know, he was my hero. And there's this picture of me as a rookie in Jordan and we're having a laugh. Uh, and what happened was I got switched on to him. You know, he backed me down in the post, did his little you know, shake and, and hit a fadeaway on me. We go down the other end, someone gets fouled shooting a free throw. So I'm standing there as the point guard behind the shooter. And he comes over to me and he says, you were at a slight disadvantage. And, uh, you know, as a rookie, I, you know, <laughs> I, it was like that moment where I was like, holy, shit. like I'm talking, and MJ just scored on me. He's letting me have it in a fun way. This is unbelievable. And all I could think of was, Chucky Brown got his shoes. So he tells me, you're at a slight disadvantage. And I turn, I go, I laugh. And then I go, can I have your shoes after the game? And of course, sure enough, after the game, I got his shoes and all that. And I remember it just takes you back because as a guy who, who, who I hope proved was a fierce competitor in my whole career, it takes you back to what kind of mindset I was in as a rookie with Michael Jordan and how that was all secondary to this hero worship in a way. And I remember my vet, Rex Chapman, who was really, is a really close friend of mine and was, you know, uh, is still uh, a good friend, was so pissed at me that I got to ask for his shoes and got his shoes. And now the last legend we have is Kobe Bean Bryant. He is the only player you can confidently say emulated Jordan's game and made it his style. We don't have to talk about how much respect they have for each other since this was his mentor. Jordan taught him everything he needed to know and he succeeded. So here's the story of the first time Kobe faced Jordan. I'm getting schooled for a baseline dunk the first time I matched up with him. That was... <laughs> That was like the coolest thing. You know, it was all the main challenge, going out there and playing against the Bulls, you know, guard Michael Jordan. Uh, nothing can top that. They've made a switch already, putting Kobe on Michael. <laughs> uh, then, they, then the education. Accelerated learning. <laughs> wow. It was, because I'd seen that spin move so many times, and then I knew he was going to do it. Um, but the timing on TV and then in person are two completely different things. So he just spun right before I thought he was going to spin. And I was like, damn, that was pretty cool. When I came to the league and matching up against him, um, what I found is I found that he was extremely open um, to having a relationship, a mentor relationship, and giving me a great amount of advice and an, an amazing amount of detail, um, strategies, um, workout regimens, and things like that. So, um, I mean, seriously, I mean, I don't think people really understand the amount of impact that he's had on me as a, as a player and, uh, and as a leader. So the level of fear that he inspired in others was insane. Wow. And I would tell him, I said, when I face him, we're going to go at it. He says, oh, you don't want to do that. I'm like, what? Man, you don't know me, man. And so when we matched up, I think he understood that. And, you know, when I was 18, my first year, and he got the best of me a bunch of times, I was right there the next play. You're not intimidating me. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. And I think he saw that level of respect because I think he was the same way at 18 years old. And that common bond is, is what I think, uh, you know, where our connection was built. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And tell me, what was the first game you watched of Michael Jordan? And if y'all have a favorite clip here. So make sure you like, share, subscribe. And until next time.